We've got a Michigan spring game preview coming up next on Darren Talks Ball. Okay, so first things first, this is going to be just like my Ohio State spring game preview I did last week. Of course, the Buckeyes had their spring game last Saturday, Michigan's this Saturday. We've got actual football to talk about, by the way, at least for the time being. The college football calendar is a really weird, disjointed thing. All kinds of recruiting stuff and things going on throughout the season and the off season. of course. There's transfer portals at random parts in the calendar. And then for like one, two weeks in the spring in April, we got some actual football ish to talk about some teams do their spring games differently than others so the line the definition on whether it's actual football or not is debatable there but one thing's for sure michigan will be playing with full contact in their spring game which is something that um certain other teams really can't say that they do can't really take pride on but nonetheless this is going to be a list of things that i'm looking for in the spring game this saturday of course i will be there if you happen to see me say hi well we could have a chat hang out whatever i'm not i, I say that again i mentioned this on a video the other day i say that as if i'm like a celebrity or something it's no like i'm, I'm not I'm not just a guy. So if you if you happen to recognize me out there, say hi. But I'll be out there with a couple of buddies, enjoying the spring game, taking in all the action, and taking in the, again the fact that we've got some real football to watch. And Michigan will be playing real football on Saturday again, unlike certain teams. So before we really get into it, I'm going to get into number one on my list here. But before we really get into it, feel free to hit that like button, get this video up into the algorithm get more eyes on this channel, help this channel continue to grow. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as well. And getting to the first thing on my list, I don't think it's going to surprise anybody at all. I'm just going to get it. I'm just going to dive right into probably what is the biggest question mark, the biggest thing we're all looking at in the spring game, the thing we're all looking forward to seeing. And that's the quarterback battle, because again, Michigan's kind of got not just a quarterback battle going on, but it's especially intriguing, I feel like, because it's kind of a wide-open quarterback battle. At least that's from what everyone's saying. There's been mention of certain guys looking better than others. People are kind of reading between the tea leaves as far as who gets mentioned more often than others. Of course, Michigan's very tight-knit still, it seems like, even under Sharon Moore. Under Jim Harbaugh, there was always the mantra of, like, we're going to lock ourselves into the submarine for six months or whatever every offseason and not give out any info to anybody. We don't want anyone to know what's going on here. But uh, there seems to still be a little bit of that going on. So there's a lot of reading between tea leaves. There's a lot of rumors, a lot of things there's a lot of things that come in and try to fill that void that we have as fans, as far as what we want, as far as the information that we would like to have. So it's going to be interesting to see all the quarterbacks on display in spring, because this isn't just a battle between one or two guys. This kind of seems like a wide open thing between a few guys now. And I even did a video a while back on how you really shouldn't look past Jaden Davis entering his name into this battle, although it looks like now, for now, most of the rumors and most everything from like credible sources I've seen have said that they're more than likely, if not absolutely kind of decided on it now for the meantime that he's going to redshirt this next season. But the first player that I want to get into in the quarterback battle is the guy that keeps getting brought up in a lot of interviews. People keep making mention of him. Coaches keep make, making mention of him. Players keep mention, mentioning him. And I think he's probably the fan favorite. I saw Trevor McHugh on Twitter the other day. By the way, if you're not following Trevor McHugh from Amazing Blue Review, you really should. They do really great work over there. He put out a poll and basically was just like, fan vote. I want to kind of get the the base, a sense of the feeling of the fans of the program right now as far as who the favorite is for the quarterback battle. Of course, he put all the names out there. And Alex Orgy, the guy we're talking about here, got like 63%. Um, which is a lot when you're we've got like four different options. So... What I really need to see from Alex Orgy, though, in this game, and I think I'm not surprising anyone by saying this. We all know by now the biggest question mark on him is his accuracy. And it's not just that I want to see accuracy from him. I want to see it on a consistent basis. Um, can he make all the throws necessary in this offense, by the way? We all know Kirk Campbell likes to run a lot of stick routes, the route where the receiver kind of goes up three or four yards, maybe five or six yards downfield and straight towards the sideline. A lot of digs across the field where you're kind of looking for a hole in the zone or trying to pull across away from your man in man coverage. Lots of also like underneath crossing routes and things. We saw Roman Wilson run a lot of, I wouldn't say crossing routes, but kind of, 
yeah, crossing routes, but more like a deep slant and that kind of thing. And that a lot of the routes in the route tree of the offense that Kirk Campbell calls requires some precision passing and great timing. It's a lot of stuff meant to get the wide receiver the ball and let him run after it. Of course, like I mentioned just a second ago, crossing routes were a big thing for guys like Roman Wilson and Samaj Morgan in this offense. Those stick routes out to the sideline, that's a very tough throw to make. And I want to see Alex Orgy make that on a consistent basis. Of course, we all think, at least we're all kind of uh, conjecturing right now and wondering and hypothesizing if this offense will look different when Alex Orgy is in the game. So that's another thing I'm looking for. Will they kind of tailor things to his skill set? Because I honestly, from what we've heard and from what we know from what he did in his high school career and the appearances he's had in other spring games in previous years, I don't know if he can make all those throws I just listed on a consistent basis. Dig routes deep over the middle, he's probably okay on, but especially like those stick routes that they run a ton of um, in short crossing routes and stuff the short crossing route is a relatively easy one to hit but it's a very hard one to hit with the type of precision you need to hit for the receiver to really run after the catch so if you can do some of that stuff that's all the better because he is by far the most athletic guy in the quarterback room very very elusive very strong and powerful of a runner we all know that the upside on this guy i've been saying it all off season so far i really believe it is Jalen milro 2.0 i think the fact that they used him in practice leading up to the Rose Bowl last year to kind of simulate Jalen Milrow was a big factor in why they were so successful against him in the Rose Bowl. And and I just think, I do think Alex Orgy is probably the front runner because I do think when all things are considered and none of the other quarterbacks in this room really have elite level arm talent, that athleticism can probably get him the job. But do they tailor the offense to that? Do they literally run like a kind of wing T thing or a, a, a single wing offense at times um, while he's out there and get him running quarterback power and get him running some read option stuff even with Donovan Edwards and Khalil Mullins at running back? That'll be interesting to see. And that's one of the big things I'm looking for in the spring game. But I'm not just looking for a high level of play from Alex Orgy, of course. I'm also really intrigued by Jaden Denigal. Um I think a lot of people have, I don't, I'm not going to say written him off in this. I think early on in camp, there was some talk of Jack Tuttle uh, making some noise or just talk of Jack Tuttle generally. He ended up with getting an unfortunate injury, and I don't, I don't think he's going to play at all in the spring game from what I've seen and heard. There's been talk of Jaden Davis. There's even been some talk of Davis Warren as of late, and we'll get into Davis Warren in just a second. But Jaden Denigal kind of low-key flying under the radar, despite being another really athletic quarterback, not on the par with Alex Orgy in terms of his elus- elusiveness and stuff, but the pocket presence might be another thing. We'll get into it in a minute here, too. The offensive line is going to be playing together for the first time this form of this off this iteration of this offensive line this will be their first time playing together this season when they start the season in the fall because lost all their starters from last season of course so when you're playing behind in a relatively inexperienced offensive line like this i know plenty of the guys on the line have plenty of experience but as a unit i'm saying they haven't really played together having that pocket presence having that kind of pocket mobility to potentially move the pocket move with the pocket and have great pocket presence. That could all be great things, great tools in Jaden Denigal's toolbox that could make him a good quarterback in the system. But I'm really looking for his accuracy, and especially if his release and his accuracy are as advertised. I think out of all the quarterbacks in the quarterback room, he's got the quickest release from what I've seen, from what I've heard. He's got decent accuracy. He was, of course, a four-star recruit coming out of high school, so decent throw of the football. Could be elite. We don't know. That's the thing is we haven't seen a lot of these guys play very much over the last couple of seasons because it's been the J.J. McCarthy show. We see them, seen them bits and pieces in the fourth quarter of some games from last season, of course, but Michigan was largely up by like 25, 30 points in some of those fourth quarters late in games last season, so they were just running the ball to run out clock. So even then, we haven't seen a lot of these guys. Yeah, and my other question on Jaden Denigal is, can he make up for the lack of athleticism in comparison to Alex Orgy by just effectively operating the offense? And I think this is the thing that the quarterbacks are going to be evaluated on the most. I think it's going to come less down to which ones run a certain, which ones fit best within a certain style or uh, 
philosophical, strategic. What am I trying to say here? I'll slow down for a second. It's going to come less down less to, it's going to be less down to, there we go, the style of play that the quarterback plays with and the style of offense that fits them and more up to how effective they just run the offense, how effective they are at playing quarterback, which is measured ultimately. We all know this by now. Jim Harbaugh was big on this and so is Sharon Moore. Getting the ball downfield and scoring touchdowns. Whichever quarterback in this room does that the most, I think will win the starting job. And for Jaden Denigal, it's just a matter of making the right throws, making the right reads, showing that you are a polished college quarterback at this point, which I think honestly is all this offense may need to be successful because you've got an elite defense, one of the best defenses in the country coming back. You've got potentially an elite offensive line. You've got great running backs. You've got a great tight end. You don't need to be Joe Burrow. You don't need to be Trevor Lawrence. You just got to be somebody who operates this offense well and plays efficiently. And I think he can be. I think late in the Nebraska game from last year's coming to mind, he had a really great touchdown pass. Excuse me. I think the Peyton O'Leary. I think it was Peyton O'Leary's one touchdown catch all season. It was a, it was that game against Nebraska that Michigan won like 45 to 7 or something like that. So he's shown it. He's shown accuracy. He's shown an ability to to make the right reads and make the right throws. So that's all I'm really looking for him. But paired with the athleticism that he has, um, is that all, is that whole package better than what Alex Orgy has to offer? We'll see. And we'll especially see in the spring game because all of these guys are obviously going to get their chance. Speaking of another guy with a chance is Davis Warren. I didn't talk about Davis Warren. I don't think I've mentioned him in any of my videos on the quarterback battle so far. And I feel kind of bad because he's still definitely in the mix from what I've seen. Um, Michigan released a little bit of practice footage the other day. Of course, on Twitter and on Instagram, they release a lot of like little highlight clips and stuff of practice and lo and behold there was one of davis warren hitting a hitting a pretty good good ball downfield i believe it was to samaj morgan for what looked like a touchdown and that thing was that thing was a dime i'm not gonna lie of course if anyone's been following michigan football for a while you know that you know davis warren's story the leukemia having overcome that he probably would have been a four four or five star recruit coming out of high school if it wasn't for that we all know the upside, we all know the potential, but can he really play up to that potential is what I want to see. Because in previous spring games, if you look back last season especially, he did not play too terribly well. Um, I think, I want to say it was a spring game two seasons ago. That's how long Davis Warren has been on campus, by the way. He threw a bad interception. So, correct me if I'm wrong, though. It was, it was either the spring game from this past season or the spring game before that. But anyway... I want to see him kind of finally play up to that potential because we all know he has it. And if he plays up to his potential, he's got himself in the mix. But I really think when it comes down to it, it's going to come down to Denigal or Orgy so far. We know Jaden Davis is probably a year away. We know now, despite my videos that I have made hyping him up, he's probably going to get a red shirt. And uh, Jack Tuttle's injured for now, so we don't know really where we're at there. The two guys I'm really looking forward to watch, of course, are Alex Orgy and Jaden Denigal. I would say those are probably leaders as of now, but that's just from what I know and what I've seen. And Davis Warren, I think, can get himself in the mix if he plays well. And again, none of these guys have to blow the lid off of the defense. They'll be playing, of course, the best one of the best defenses in the country this next season if not the best. So all they've got to do is operate the offense effectively, make the right reads, take the check down if it's there and that's all that's there, and just move the ball progressively downfield. Of course, this is a this is an offense that wants to complement its defense. Michigan is really based on complementary football, playing ball control. You don't need to be making 30, 40 yard bombs. Um all throughout the game in the spring game to really impress this coaching staff because that's not necessarily the philosophy with which the entire team approaches a game. If you occasionally hit on a really deep play action pass downfield on a deep post or something, that's great. Of course, that was something that JJ actually did a lot of, and a lot of people didn't talk enough about it, but you just got to be effective and efficient in this offense, I think is the key. 
And that's really it for the quarterback battle. Just generally, I want to see scoring drives. I want to see which quarterback scores the most points. I know that sounds really re re reducive. Uh, reductionist. There we go. There's the right word. Reductionist. That sounds really just oversimplifying it, but it really comes down to that. If you're a quarterback who can effectively operate the offense and the offense is scoring points while you're on field, that might just win you the starting job over having some insane arm cannon uh, throw 50 yards downfield that's on the money or, or making a bunch of crazy plays but not having it result in points. This is an offense. This is a philosophy, a team that has a philosophy of playing efficiently and consistently. So... That and distribution, again, you don't have to hit home runs. Take them while they are there. Otherwise, just take what the defense gives you. And, again, it's going to be tough sledding against this defense in the spring game. And then, really, like, the last thing I'll say about the quarterback battle is communication. Do you communicate well? Do you operate the offense? Do you run the offense? Do you really take the reins of that offense and uh, get guys in the right position on every play. Some little things, some little less tangible things that I think gets overlooked when it comes to quarterback play. Are you really the leader out on the field? Does you Do you look like the guy who has charge of this offense? And that's really it for the quarterback play in the spring game. That's what I'm looking for. Again, chime in the comments and let me know what you guys think. Who do you think really should and and should have the job and should have the lead in the quarterback battle going into the spring game. All right now that we've spent like 15 minutes talking about the quarterback battle, I feel like I could talk about the quarterback battle for days, honestly. It's very intriguing to me. It's interesting that they're quarterbacks of all sorts of styles that bring different dynamic things to this offense. This is very interesting to me. I could ramble for a while, but I got to get to the next thing on my list because I'm sure you guys are here for all of it, not just quarterback battle talk again, like the video, all that good stuff. The next point on my on my list is the offensive line. I'm curious to just generally see if it's up to Michigan standards, but I do want to throw a big qualifier in here. I think a lot of people are overlooking this or, or forgetting about this. The format in which Michigan runs their spring game they do like a draft and it's just straight up I think the offensive coordinator which will be Kirk Campbell of course this season and then the defensive coordinator Wink Martindale each get a team they draft off the roster to make their roster their little sub rosters if you want to call them that to make their team and uh, and then they just play they just roll the ball out there and they play a game of football which I think is honestly the best format as far as entertainment purposes is concerned there's no weird scoring it's just straight up offense defense maze team offense defense blue team but with that you get a lot of units and especially the offensive line is the one unit that really gets torn apart and then it's really hard because of this format to evaluate the offensive line play because you're going to have starters on the offensive line on one side and starters on the offensive line on the other unless they keep the offensive line the starting unit together on one team or the other Correct me in the comments now that I think about it. I might be completely wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure they divide everybody up. So as far as judging them as a unit, that's going to be impossible to do in this game if they do it the way that I think they do. But I am really curious about some individual play. I'm really curious about seeing Greg Crippen at center. Just want to see him calling out the right protections, getting guys in the right spots, and just looking like that leader that you need at the center position. Of course, it's been reported Greg Crippen was kind of ready to take the starting job a couple of seasons ago. And, of course, they, they got the opportunity to pick up guys like Olu Oluwatimi and Drake Nugent, and they took those opportunities to get those, like, all-American caliber centers. And uh, Greg Crippen stuck around, waited for a couple of years instead of transferring. It's almost like Michigan does have a great culture, and no one's leaving a sinking ship around here. Crazy. Just a thought. Just a thought, though. But I am really curious to see Greg Crippen. I'm also curious about the guard play. I think the guards between Giovanni El Hadi and Josh Preeb, who of course comes from Northwestern, could be two of the better guards in the Big Ten. I think they could be the best guard duo in the Big Ten, which is really saying something because we just lost, of course, Zach Zinter and Trevor Keegan, who were once again, they were the previous best guards in the Big Ten, if not the country in terms of guard pairing. So Giovanni El Hadi, of course, lots of experience, has some starting experience while other guys were injured two and three seasons ago, has been on campus for a while now. 
he's either a redshirt junior or a senior. I can't remember. And then Josh Preeb, of course, is a graduate transfer. So he's in his like fifth year of college el- eligibility. All these people, by the way, that think that like Michigan's really falling off a cliff because their offensive line play isn't going to be good, aren't paying attention because like every single player along this offensive line is going to be a redshirt junior or a senior. Once again, because Michigan recruits at high level when it comes to these positions they have for the past few years, and that's why you just see a rotation of guys pouring in. And once again, the freshman class, by the way, already getting some praise in camp along the offensive line. The real big question mark around along the offensive line for me, though, and for a lot of people, I think, is tackle. Um, it's been reported Miles Sinton has lost a bunch of weight, looks a little bit more uh, uh, agile out there. He says he's happier with where his body is at. He looks to play left tackle. I think it's come out now that he's been playing a lot of left tackle in camp. He said he likes playing there. It's going to come down to he, excuse me, Andrew Gentry and Jeff Percy at the tackle positions. Those are probably the biggest question marks and where the battles really are. Because once again, I think it's pretty much settled. It seems like it's Greg Crippen, El Hadi, and Preeb in the center of that offensive line. Miles Sinton probably a left tackle. And then Andrew Gentry, Jeff Percy, we'll see how that all settles out. But that's what I'm looking for in the along the offensive line in the spring game and then it wouldn't be a michigan video these days if i didn't mention mason graham and kenneth grant yes those are two guys that i personally again i'm going to be there in person and i'm so excited it's my first trip ever to the big house by the way i've been a michigan fan all my life so far i never got to make it to a game i traveled all over the country for a while uh in my previous career and just never was able to make it so now i am and i'm extremely happy to make it i'm extremely happy to see mason graham and kenneth grant in person that's just uh Oh, this is going to be nice. But again, they might be split up because of the way that they do the uh, spring game draft and things. But just the defensive line play in general is something that I'm going to be keen to have an eye on because while those two are definitely solidified starters all the way through, they'll probably be starting next to each other most games. Depth is a big reason why the defensive line was so good last season. Of course, Derek Moore and Josiah Stewart will also be playing on the edges as starters, and I'm looking for some guys to rotate there and take over occasionally to help keep fresh legs in there. And one guy in particular that's really intriguing that I am really looking out for, there's rumors abound about him looking really good in camp so far, by the way. Guy out of the 2023 class, Eno Etta, who is kind of a Mike Morris type of edge player. I think they recruited him as an edge, but now it's rumored that he's going to be playing kind of inside and outside, both like three technique and five technique at times, like Mike Morris did. Again, he's a big, strong, fast, athletic defensive end, and he can occasionally on certain downs move inside as well. But of course, I'm also excited about seeing Trey Pierce, a guy that Michigan really got in a tight recruiting battle with Wisconsin over a former three-star recruit. But has the, has the look, and we've talked about him in previous videos, has the look to potentially be another Mason Graham, which is really cool. Uh, he's a true sophomore. And then, of course, Rayshon Benny is back, gets another chance to play in this rotation and play even better. And I think he'll continue to develop and be even better. So those are some guys I'm keeping my, my eyes on on the defensive line, because of course, Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant are going to be great, but they can't be out there every single snap of the game. Of course, when you're as big as a guy like Mason Graham, and you're as big as a guy like Kenneth Grant, especially Kenneth Grant, it's just impossible to be out there every single down of the game, though I'm sure they would love to, and they'll probably try to be out there more often this season, because the depth isn't quite there, but you're going to need some depth. You're going to need to rotate, and that's what this defensive system uh at least philosophically, is kind of based on keeping fresh legs along the defensive line so you get more production. So that's another thing that I'm looking for in the spring game on Saturday. And then last but not least, I did actually have these things listed as two different bullet points on my list, but I'm going to combine them here because I think there are a lot of ways in which they're kind of very much related in the the players who are kind of up for either of these positions could actually play either of these positions. That's just the defensive backfield in general we're going to cover here for the next minute. But more specifically, we're going to get into who might play nickel and who might play cornerback too, because those are the biggest question marks. On the defense really as a whole, we talked about the defensive line for just a second, but that defensive line rotation is already largely set. There's just a couple of guys I'm looking for to see if they have a lot of promise for high upside. We know those guys are going to play. We don't really know who exactly is going to get a lot of play 
playing time uh, and be the starters at these two positions in specific on the defensive backfield, especially at nickel. Um, and remember, we won't be getting true like ones v ones. So when the initial offense and defense roll out there, depending on who gets the ball first, whoever's playing nickel on defense, that doesn't mean really anything. That doesn't mean that they have the starting nickel position for now. When you watch a spring game like Ohio State's, on the other hand, they're going 1s v 1s, 2s v 2s, 3s v 3s, and that kind of scarlet and gray way that they set it up. So we don't know. That's not based off a depth chart. That's based off of who got drafted for what team for this spring game. Again, I like the spring game format a lot more, but there's some ways in which it's like it doesn't really give us much in terms of who's really up there on the depth chart. Of course, if a guy gets more playing time throughout the game, if he gets more snaps, it's like, okay, he's probably... He's probably up there. But the guys to watch out for, of course, are guys like Zeke Berry, Jaden McBurrows. A lot of you guys have already heard these names. I think those two are probably – we've heard a lot of positive things about those two, by the way, from camp so far. Zeke Berry is a guy that some of the coaches are really high on. They're really high on his football IQ, which is a big thing for playing nickel. And – uh, for Michigan these days in this defense. The nickel is almost like the new Mike linebacker. Like you're the guy getting people into position. You're the guy making sure the coverage is all right pre-snap. And you're the guy seemingly making adjustments when the offense is doing a lot of pre-snap motion and stuff and changing up their formation. So if Zeke Barry is the intelligent, like hyper intelligent player that the coaches would make him out to be, he might be in the lead for that role. But look out for Jaden McBurrows, too. Of course, he unfortunately is known mostly for being the target of the assault in the tunnel incident a couple of years ago. But since then, he's come around to being a very great player as well. Um, and it was really awesome to see him get some revenge in that Michigan State game last season, getting an interception to close out that game. So Jane McBrills, Zeke Berry, a couple guys I'm going to have my eye on in that nickel battle. And then cornerback two is also up for discussion. Um, of course, we all know Will Johnson. Despite what Bucknuts247 is saying these days, if you happen to see their Twitter account this morning, uh, Yikes, fell for a bit of uh, troll material there they did this morning. Will Johnson not transferring, it turns out. But anyway, Will Johnson will definitely be cornerback one. It's a, num- it's a matter of who's going to play the role that Josh Wallace had last season. And I'm personally looking for Jair Hill. I really like him. I think he should have been a five-star out of high school. Very, very athletic guy. And um, yeah, that's basically what I'm looking for in terms of the spring game for the defensive backfield. One more name to mention too, DJ Waller, the former four-star recruit, I believe out of the 2023 class, might have been 2022, but another guy to keep an eye on. There's been a lot of rumors about him, a lot of positive things said about him in camp so far. I believe he's a bit of a longer, bigger guy, bit of a bit of a hard hitter at corner, could also play some safety, could move around. A guy also to look for maybe even playing nickel in the spring game. A lot we don't know. A lot we don't know about this defensive backfield. We just got little bits and pieces that we have to put together. But we'll have a lot more of the puzzle, of course. And I will be back next week also to react to Michigan spring games. So look for that. And again, I'll be there. So if you see me around, feel free to say hi. Feel free to say, hey, what's up with this take you had? We'll have a discussion. It'll be cool. And uh, until next time, and always, go blue.